Hi, my name is Avery Young, and in this video, I want to show you how to make a homemade pump gauge so that you can tell how strong the suction is in your pump and how well it's working for less than $20. So lots of people have momentary drops in their supply at some point along their pumping and feeding relationship. And a lot of times that drop in supply can make us panic because we think that like our milk supply is going away. And then we get into this doom spiral about what that means about our milk supply and our ability to feed our baby and all the bad things that come along with that. And the very first thing we should always do when our pump isn't working as well as we think it should, if we're not getting the same output, is to check the pump. So we want to blame the pump first. And you can change the tubing, the membrane, and all of those things. But sometimes pumps fail too. So here's how you can make a gadget that can test how well your pump is working or how strong the suction is in your pump for under 20 bucks. What you need is a pump gauge, which is specifically a vacuum gauge because your pump is pulling air. And what we want to know is how hard or how strong is that pull or that suction that your pump is making. So here's your pump and here's your gauge. And we just have to figure out a way to connect the two. So what we're going to do is we're going to get an adapter that makes a plug that lets us put it inside your pump flange. I'm probably going to make some of the names up. It'll totally be wrong, but I can put the links below and I know what sizes I needed because I've tested a lot of them before I made this video. So I can make sure that you get started off on this a little bit easier than I did. So the first thing that you're going to need is a way to make this smaller so that we can fit this into the stopper that we're going to use to put this inside of our pump flange. This is called a coupler, I think. Specifically, it's a female coupler because it has a receiver. And this part over here is the male. It's barbed, and I wanted it to be barbed so it would stick into this stopper really well. And this is a fourth of an inch right here. So it's a fourth of an inch female that you can just screw right here on the bottom of this. The next thing that you're going to need is a stopper. We want to be able to put this into your pump flange and have it be a really nice snug fit so that no air is escaping around the sides. These stoppers come in different sizes and I've tested those too and got them wrong. So I want to make sure I drop the sizes below so that you won't get them wrong. In a standard 24 millimeter flange, which is what most pumps come with nowadays, the number five, um, stopper right here fits very nicely into this. So it's really nice and snug and then no air can escape around the side. And you can actually see around the ring that it's making a nice seal. Now, if you don't have a 24, if you've sized down and you've gotten rid of your smaller sizes, then you can also use a number three. So this number three is a much smaller, you can see the diameter difference between these. Can you see that? This one's smaller. So this one fits really well into phalanges that are smaller than this. So you probably can go all the way down to like a four, a 15 or so with this number three. So having both of them can be handy if you're also a lactation consultant and you want to be able to um, test different sides. So then all we need to do is take this stopper and put it on the barb. So we're going to do this and I'm just going to twist it up here so that it's nice and snug. And when I've got it all the way in there and it's nice and snug, now I have a way to get this gauge snugly and securely into my pump flange like this. I'm going to push it in there nice and deep. By the way, I always want to put the, the um, stopper on the end of my um, adapter before before you put it into the pump flange, because if you shove it in there and it gets stuck, you won't have a way to get it out. But with this thing, it's really snug on here, so I can push this in and pull it out really easily. So make sure you put this on first. So we're gonna put this on first, and now we have this set up exactly the way we want it to go. So I'm gonna take this backflow adapter because Spectra has to have these in order for the pump to work. So now I have this set up exactly like it is supposed to be. And I want you to know that since I'm doing this as a scientific experiment, I totally tried to use the parts that came with the Spectra to the extent that I could, but I've had this pump for a while. And so some of these parts are um, not original to it. Specifically, the membrane is not original to it. And I don't know if this hose is original to the Spectra or not, but now I can turn it on. I'm going to put this here. There you go. And you can see that this is pumping, is actually pulling pretty well. Now, I actually started this on 12, which is the highest setting for this pump. And I'm going to show you what happens as I turn it down. 
you'll start to see that the suction gets less and less. And when I get all the way down here to one, now it's not pulling very much at all, which is exactly what I would expect my pump to work. I would expect there to be a big difference between suction number one and the highest pump setting. So now that you've tested your pump, what do you do with that data? The first thing you want to make sure is that your pump is pulling close to or more than potentially what the maximum suction value for your pump is. And your manufacturer publishes that. But I also have a link below, which you can click on to get to a chart with the common published numbers so that you can see how your pump stacks up. Now, this isn't an exercise in precision. So it doesn't matter if your pump is within five or six like millimeters of where it's supposed to be. We're just trying to get a general idea as if your pump is still pulling pretty strongly. And you will have to convert because this pump doesn't measure in the millimeters of HG that your pump is stated in. It measures more specifically in kilopascals. And so you may have, and I have a conversion chart for you so that you just want to see what's going on to make sure that you're in the ballpark. Because if you turn your pump up and turn it down and nothing changes, or you turn it on and nothing's working, or you get a baseline for your pump and then you test it again in a month or so and it's much less, then that tells you that your pump isn't working as well as it could. And the thing you wanna blame then is your pump and not your body. If you wanna catch more of these videos about pumping, then make sure you click subscribe in the button below. And if you have questions about pumping that I haven't answered, you can send them to info at nourishjung.com.